Chapter 9 Katie took a deep breath and tried not to run away. Jackson had been avoiding her since the kiss, and she was tired of it. He claimed he was busy typing on that laptop of his, finishing the latest manuscript of J.D. Emerson. She was pretty sure he was lying. It didn't take that long to write one scene. Then again, her judgment in men was skewed. They traveled, had dinner with the congresswoman, where Katie had only managed to spill tea into Jackson's lap, done three more book signings, and now she had a room full of people waiting in the ballroom of a fancy hotel. Andrea had told her there were four hundred people out there. Katie was terrified. Katie didn't know why Andrea would say such a thing. It was like the agent was happy that there were so many people out there. Katie wanted to crawl into a bed and never come out. She wanted Jackson to hold her and tell her in that deep voice of his that everything was going to be okay. She felt like fainting. Katie spotted him at the back of the room, and it definitely wasn't close enough. She didn't know what his problem was, but she needed to know right now. It would be easier to face Jackson than to face all these strangers waiting for her to pretend to be someone she wasn't. She marched from the room beside the stage and walked quickly down the aisle where women were milling around before the event. Jackson watched a determined Katie stride toward him. Today she had on some blue sunflower-type dress. It was pretty. She was beautiful, and he sucked in a breath to brace himself. It had been all he could do over the past couple days not to haul her into his arms and repeat the kiss. Katie was filling far too many of his thoughts, and he wasn't sure what to do. She was pregnant, he reminded himself. She was probably in a relationship, he reminded himself even more firmly. She wasn't his, Jackson told himself again, for the umpteenth time. Katie stopped in front of him and wet her lips nervously. Jackson, I need to know what's going on. Excuse me? He frowned, dragging his gaze from her lips to her eyes. He wondered if she was talking about the book signing, the kiss between them, or what exactly. There was just too much going on, and Jackson wasn't going to pretend he understood her. What do you mean? She gave him a pleading look. You are avoiding me. Ever since we tried to fix that scene between Alana and Monroe, you're distant, and it's difficult because I need you to be my friend. Katie mentally kicked herself at the lame finish to what she had just said. She didn't want to be friends with Jackson. She never had. She wanted so much more, but she couldn't seem to take back the words that she had just said. That was the problem with her, she decided. When it came to Jackson, she was a coward. She was scared he would never see her as anything but the neighbor tomboy come to play with his little brother. Friends, Jackson echoed. So that was where they stood. She just wanted to be friends. Jackson tried to ignore the disappointment that he felt. You know that we are friends. Well, you haven't been exactly acting like one lately, she said quietly. Katie felt silly and childish, remonstrating him like that. She sighed and decided not to pursue it further at the moment. Andrea was beckoning frantically from the side, pointing at her watch that it was time for Katie to take the stage. I'm sorry, I have to go on stage. Jackson grabbed her hand as she turned away. He tugged her back, hesitating before he gave her a hug. I'm sorry, Katie. We are friends, and I promise to do better. Thank you, Katie whispered as she returned the awkward hug. Releasing Jackson, she made her way to the stage, where Andrea was now at the microphone waiting impatiently to introduce Katie and tell the audience to take their seats. Katie smiled and waved to the crowd as she began what was starting to become her routine. She kept her eyes on Jackson while she gave a limited introduction about her background. Her heart fluttered, and Katie almost dropped the book before she was supposed to read the chapter, but she recovered. Jackson watched Katie with mixed feelings. If she just wanted to be friends, then that was all that they would be. He wondered if she loved the mystery guy, whoever he was, 
the absent father of her baby, who never seemed to call, even though they had been away from Pendle for weeks. Jackson tried to unclench his jaw. He found he didn't want Katie loving anyone. He didn't want her marrying anyone else but him. It had been that way ever since the kiss. Jackson wanted to be the one in Katie's life. He wanted to take her out on dates, make her smile, and be her boyfriend. He could see himself stand in as the father for her baby. He wondered what it would be like to be married to Katie Sutton, what it would be like to have a family with her, to watch her grow old, if she wouldn't mind being a farmer's wife. Surely she had felt the heat and desire in their kiss, too. The evening was a long one, because there were so many women there asking questions and getting their books signed. There were even a few men, to Jackson's surprise. Katie seemed tired afterward, and she lightly massaged her writing hand. He hoped Andrea didn't have too many large gatherings like this one set up. He escorted Katie to the next hotel, where once again they were billeted in the same room. Jackson carried her bag, ever the gentleman. He was surprised when she pushed her way into the washroom, shoving the door so that it was half shut. Jackson could hear her lose her supper. Well, he guessed that answered that question with a certainty. Jackson put her luggage on her bed, then got a cup from the tiny kitchenette. He filled it with cool water and approached the washroom. Tentatively, he opened the door to find Katie blowing her nose in some toilet paper. She looked up at him miserably, and he offered the glass to her. Katie gratefully took it and drank some of it. When she was finished, he set the glass on the counter and helped her to her feet. Are you going to be all right? Katie nodded, pale and a little unsteady. I'm fine. They both knew it was a lie, but Jackson let it pass. Andrea says the television spot on Ruby is tomorrow, Katie whispered. She was absolutely dreading going on the television show. Today had been difficult enough. Katie didn't know how she was going to get through tomorrow. What if she froze on stage? What if she couldn't remember anything of what she was supposed to say? What if she accidentally told the world that she wasn't J.D. and blew it? Hey, it's going to be okay. Jackson tried to reassure her with a soothing voice. You handled tonight like a pro, and you're going to do great tomorrow. I don't feel like a pro. I feel like a fraud, she complained. Katie dabbed at her eyes with another piece of toilet paper. I'm taking credit for your work. That's the deal we both made. He agreed easily. Jackson wasn't sure why she was so upset. I'm asking you to do this. I still feel bad about it. Katie wiped her eyes tiredly. Hey. Jackson decided enough was enough, and gently folded her into his arms, rubbing her back. Don't feel bad about it. You are saving me from all the jokes the guys at home would make if they knew. I really appreciate that. I just know that tomorrow is going to be a disaster somehow, Katie sighed. It felt so good to be in Jackson's arms. If only she could stay there forever, safe from all the rubies in the world. Jackson continued to rub her back and enjoyed holding her. She fit perfectly against him in his opinion. You are going to do just fine. Nothing is going to happen. I'm walking bad luck, Katie said morosely. My friend Sylvie says I should write a blog called Katie's Curse. He smiled against her hair. I don't think it's that bad. Just think about it. If you hadn't have thrown your keys in the dumpster, I wouldn't have offered you the job of being J.D. Emerson right when you needed a new income since the daycare let you go. It was actually a good thing the keys went into the dumpster. Katie supposed she hadn't looked at it that way before. She also wouldn't have experienced that soul-searing kiss of his, which would have been a tragedy to have missed. I suppose so. Why don't you get some rest? It's been a long day. Jackson slowly pulled away. He let her have the washroom first. While she was busy, he grabbed his phone and texted his brother, asking if Katie was seeing anyone. Almost immediately, Trent texted back that he didn't know. Katie hadn't told him that she was involved with anyone. Jackson texted again, asking if Trent had been involved with Katie over the summer, and received a green-faced emoji with Trent assuring him that dating Katie 
would be like dating his sister. Then his brother asked if Jackson was interested in Katie. Jackson hesitated a moment before typing and sending a simple maybe. Trent then texted if he should ask Katie if she was seeing anyone. Jackson put an emphatic no and sent it to his brother. The last thing he wanted was Trent getting involved in this. He hoped his brother would leave it be. When Katie came out of the bathroom, he put his phone away, feeling almost guilty. Jackson supposed the best thing he could do would have been to ask Katie straight out what the truth was. Only after her request to be friends, he didn't feel like he ought to. If he was to be just friends, then he should respect her privacy. Not that Jackson wouldn't listen if she did happen to confide in him about the baby and the father. He took his turn in the washroom, and when he came out, Katie was hugging a pillow and snoring softly. The opportunity for any heart-to-heart -heart discussion lost. Jackson shut off the lights and lay sleepless in bed, staring up at the ceiling. Did he even want to know who the father of her baby was? Technically, it wasn't his problem. It didn't seem that the father was involved. At least, Jackson hadn't seen any proof. Perhaps he was the type of guy who texted or emailed rather than called. Or maybe he wasn't in the picture at all. If Katie was going to try to raise a baby alone, she would need help. Jackson knew many members of the community would happily assist, as everyone loved Katie despite her klutziness. However, if Katie had to move away from the town due to finances, she would lose out on that support. He would have to make sure she received enough income for herself and the baby. It might hurt his own pocketbook for a while, but Jackson reasoned he could find a way to tighten the budget a little at least for a little while. He would tell his mother that prices were down for the cattle. It wasn't exactly a lie. Prices were down. They hadn't affected his total income. However, since although livestock prices decreased, his book royalties had increased, evening things out financially. It worried him a little that he hadn't seen Katie make a single call while they were on this tour. Guys didn't always call their loved ones but Katie should be calling the father of the baby. If she were in a relationship, she would want to talk to her beau. Women were like that, always wanting to talk when just a quick message would do. Katie was being very sneaky if she was making any phone calls, which meant she didn't want anyone to know who the guy was, meaning that everyone might disapprove of him. Jackson wondered if Katie could be involved with someone unsuitable. The only two things that Jackson could think of that were unsuitable off the top of his head was that the guy was doing jail time, which would have to be very recent since Katie didn't appear to be showing from her pregnancy, or the guy was already married. Not good options. Then again, the other possibility was that they were fighting, or Katie wasn't in a relationship at all. The guy could be history. Jackson hoped that the guy at least knew he was going to be a father. Otherwise, things could become very complicated. Although if Katie did get into a future relationship, it would still be complicated with visitations to the baby and support. Jackson didn't really know how all the particulars would play out. He supposed he could research it and then claim it as knowledge for a future book. Maybe Katie would let him pick her brain. Then he could probe for answers while still spending time with her. Jackson hoped that she might change her mind over the friend thing yet. Satisfied with the idea, Jackson rolled over to try to get some sleep. Tomorrow was Katie's Ruby interview. It was going to be a difficult day trying to calm Katie's nerves without getting even more attached to her. It was a nightmare, Katie decided. She was a bundle of nerves. She threw up twice this morning at the hotel. Thankfully, Jackson had been really helpful. He rubbed her back and brought her water. She wanted to just lock the door and stay in, but he managed to calm her down and talk her into coming to the studio. They wouldn't let Jackson backstage because he didn't have security clearance. She felt panicked at the thought of not having him around. When had he become her security blanket, she wondered. Katie learned that he was going to be in the audience near the back. She wouldn't even be able to see him because of the blinding lights above the audience. The panic within her got worse at the thought. 
They put her in makeup and fussed over her. Then she had to wait in a tiny little room with a sofa and magazines until she was going to be called. Andrea wasn't with her, thank goodness. Katie wasn't sure she could put up with the bossy and impatient agent at the moment. She might actually say something rude to the woman if she showed her face before Katie ran for her life, knowing her deal to be the face of J.D. Emerson. Sure, Andrea had tried to prep her for what the interview was going to be like during the drive over, but Katie just couldn't absorb it. She was going to be on the daytime show Ruby, with famous talk show host Ruby. Ruby, who had a magazine, furniture line, and a clothes brand named after her. Ruby, who was a household name. It was supposed to be the making of J.D. Emerson, launching the author to the national stage. Katie felt ready to hyperventilate. The kind assistant offered beverages, but Katie knew she would just end up spilling them all over herself and the expensive-looking carpet, so she declined. She concentrated on breathing and hoped that maybe they would just forget that she was back here. Perhaps they would run out of time with all the other guests, and Katie wouldn't have to go out. It could happen, right? All too soon, someone was calling her name, then leading her to the stage. She remembered Andrea saying to give the audience a wave and then greet the host. Katie smiled, waved, and blinked against the harsh lights. She looked for the host and avoided the chair that she almost ran into. Maybe she was getting better at this stuff, Katie reflected ruefully. She hadn't even managed a trip for once. Katie shook Ruby's hand and sat on the indicated spot on the sofa. She tried her best to ignore the audience and just focus on the host during the interview, stretching her lips into what she hoped was more of a smile than a grimace. She hoped that the cameras wouldn't be able to pick up on the fear she was feeling. Jackson watched from the back of the audience, reflecting that Katie was becoming a natural at this. She seemed very poised and was smiling at Ruby as the host happily chatted to her about the book series. We need something exciting to happen. Andrea sat next to him, checking her phone, basically bored with the whole interview process. She was checking the stats on how many people were watching the show by internet and wasn't awed by the numbers. Something to get people talking about J.D. in the new book. We need to make this viral. I thought just being on Ruby was supposed to do that, Jackson said wryly. He didn't know why Andrea was so worried about this. To him, it seemed that everything was going really well. Katie hadn't even made a single error yet. Yes, but it's trending as one of her more boring shows. Andrea frowned. Katie threw up again this morning in makeup. She's been throwing up before every show. She isn't sick. I could work that angle. She's not sick, he said shortly. He didn't like Andrea's tone. Using private personal information to boost sales was underhanded. There's no angle to work. Andrea looked at him speculatively. Are you her boyfriend? No, Jackson gave a clipped reply. Who's the baby daddy, then? She asked shrewdly, watching him. What? He swiveled his head to get a look at his agent in surprise. How did you know? I didn't, but thanks for confirming my suspicion. Andrea smiled like a cat in cream. Excuse me. Jackson watched as she got up and sidled past him to the aisle. He wondered what she was up to. Suddenly, he didn't feel very good about his choice of agent. Jackson got up and tried to see where Andrea had got to, but she was lost in the crowd. A member of the security team came over, asking him to sit back down. Jackson asked if they had seen where Andrea Schultz had gone, but the man was unhelpful, requesting Jackson to sit again. Gritting his teeth, Jackson sat. He had a bad feeling about all of this. The audience clapped and there was a commercial break during which makeup was reapplied. Ruby was given some sort of cue card from an assistant which she read and then gave back. Soon the interview resumed and Ruby leaned forward. J.D., I heard the most interesting rumor about you, the talk show host gushed as she leaned forward in her seat. Is it true you're expecting? Who is the baby daddy? Katie paled and blinked in surprise. Her mouth gaped open a moment before she was able to speak. Excuse me? 
I have it from a reliable source that you've been sick nearly every day of your book tour. Ruby took one of Katie's hands in her own, feigning concern. Does the father know? No! An indignant Katie tore her hand out of Ruby's grasp. I'm not pregnant. I get stage fright. My nerves get so bad that I end up getting sick. Whoever gave you such an idea? Your agent was certain you were, Ruby supplied helpfully. She felt the show was flagging, and this would jump it back up with a little well-placed gossip. Are you sure? I think I would know, Katie said cuttingly. Where is Andrea? Why would she think such a thing? Jackson braced himself as Katie looked up into the audience and met his eyes. He was deeply relieved that she wasn't pregnant or seeing anyone. He also knew she wasn't stupid and would connect that he might have thought such a thing and mentioned it to Andrea. Jackson Davis! Katie stood and crossed her arms. She reminded him of so many women in the community when they were annoyed with their husbands. Just because I bought a pregnancy kit doesn't mean it was meant for me. It was meant for my friend Sylvie. How was he supposed to know? Jackson thought in his defense. He stood up and decided to ask the question loudly. How was I supposed to know? I don't know. Maybe you could have just asked? Katie retorted a little sarcastically. Someone raced over with a microphone and put it in Jackson's face. He pushed it to the side. How was I supposed to ask that? Hey, Katie, are you seeing anyone? Oh, and are you carrying his baby? Not exactly an easy topic to bring up in casual conversation. You should still have asked before assuming anything, Katie said hotly. You could have said something, too. Jackson turned the tables on her. You knew when I brought that bag back to you that I had to have seen what was in it. You could have mentioned the kit was for your friend right then, but you didn't say a word. So now it's my fault that you got the wrong idea and couldn't be bothered to ask a simple question to clarify it? Katie put her hands on her hips. I didn't say that, scowled Jackson. Besides, it's not my business, as you pointed out the other day. You don't want to be anything more than friends anyways. Who said that? Katie looked at him in confusion. You did? You said you wanted to be friends, so I figured I shouldn't ask, growled Jackson. Yet you told Andrea what you thought you knew, she accused him. She guessed. You have been throwing up a lot. You've been tired and moody, he drawled. Draw your own conclusions. I have been on a busy book tour, and I have stage fright, she exclaimed angrily. Talking about being moody, who had to go for a three-hour-plus walk in the cold? Katie... We should not be talking about this here, Jackson said shortly. The last thing he wanted was for that to be televised all over the nation. Jackson blinked, remembering where they were. This had gotten out of hand. Everyone was staring at them in sheer fascination, waiting to see what they would say and do next. Oh, I think you should, interjected Ruby with interest. What is this about walking in the cold? And why does he keep calling you Katie? Katie's my real name. J.D. Emerson is a pen name, Katie clarified to the host and pointed at Jackson. We were reenacting a scene from the upcoming book, and maybe it got too intense for him or something because he left. Why would you reenact a scene? Ruby wondered curiously. She was getting excited about this new development between her guest and audience member. Maybe it was a little intense, considering you just want to be friends, Jackson shot back through gritted teeth. His anger was starting to build back up, and he took a breath to try to control his temper before he said something that would reflect badly on both him and Katie. He could just imagine what everyone back home was going to say once they found out about the two of them being on this show. There was no way he was going to live this down. Jackson was about to get the ribbing of his life going on a daytime talk show. To figure out how to write it correctly, Katie told Ruby before turning back to glower at Jackson. I don't want to be friends with you. Jackson stood up straight, fighting the pain that simple statement brought. Katie had made her feelings very obvious. Fine, that's fine. 
he pushed his way past the person holding the microphone and made for an exit. Jackson had no intention of being in the room one second longer. The crowd murmured, and everyone craned their necks trying to watch him leave. He's not leaving, is he? Ruby asked with interest and a little worry that the conflict might not be resolved if he just walked away. Her viewers would want answers, and Ruby liked to give her viewers what they wanted to keep ratings up. Jackson, you can't just leave. We should discuss this further. Why don't you come down to the stage and we can get you outfitted with a microphone during a commercial break? Jackson ignored her. He used the door clearly marked as an exit, leaving everyone behind him. Katie's voice wobbled as she watched him walk out. Jackson? Follow him! Andrea hissed from off stage, waving her hands. Yes, that's a great idea, Ruby confirmed enthusiastically. Follow him. Cameras as well. Katie gave Ruby a look of disbelief before kicking off her high heels and jumping down from the stage. Briskly walking up the steps, she dodged a cameraman and slammed into the exit door, opening it. Jackson! She could just see his form up ahead striding away from her down the long hallway that led to various recording studios. Picking up her pace, Katie ran after him, hiking up her skirt just a little so that she could take longer steps. Jackson! Katie yelled just before a door opened, and she hit it at full speed. Oomph! Katie fell to the floor, grabbing her nose and blinking rapidly at the pain. Tears welled up in her eyes. This was absolutely the most humiliating experience that she had been through yet, and Katie knew what it was like to be humiliated. Ooh, bad luck, a cameraman commented as he peered down at her even as his camera was still recording. Are you okay? Looking up at him in complete disgust, Katie decided that her trademark response of saying that she was fine, great, just peachy, wasn't going to work. Her words came out a little nasal sounding. How do you think I am? I think you're probably going to have a couple of shiners, Jackson drawled as he closed the offending door and somberly looked down at Katie. Disaster had struck her once again. He pulled out a handkerchief, then crouched down in front of her. Pull your hands away and let's see the damage. No, Katie grabbed his hands. We need to talk. You don't understand. I think I understand perfectly. Jackson said crisply. He tilted her chin and daubed at a bit of blood. Fortunately, her nose didn't look like it was broken. You said you don't want to be friends. Yes. No, I said that, but that's not what I meant. Katie pleaded with him to understand. I don't want to be friends with someone that I have had a crush on for what feels like my entire life. I don't want to be friends with you because I want so much more. I love you, Jackson. She bit her lip as she watched him looking for any sign that he might possibly return her feelings. His hand paused as he looked her in the eyes in surprise. You love me? he asked gruffly. Katie nodded, scared and exhilarated at the same time. I have for so long, I barely remember when it began. I never said anything because I knew you always saw me as Trent's annoying friend. Besides, I'm not exactly beautiful or sexy or anything. I'm the girl next door, literally for much of our lives. Plus, I'm a walking disaster. All the guys are worried about dating me because I'm always a mess, and they worry about how to deal with all my klutziness. Katie, you can stop babbling. Jackson interrupted her when she drew in a breath. I'm not babbling, she protested weakly. She knew she had been. She did that sometimes when she got really nervous. Katie simply couldn't help it. Yes, you were, Jackson smiled. He cupped her face in his hands and kissed her. Well, wasn't that exciting? A winded ruby smiled for the cameras beside the couple, sensing that her ratings were about to leap higher. J.D. Emerson gets her own happily ever after. There's more to come. Look for the next chapter of Kissing Katie right here on YouTube, plus an epilogue. Happy listening!